Acids and alkalis. Acids. Acids are non-metal oxides that can be dissolved in water. They will give an acidic solution. Alkalis are metal oxides that can be dissolved in water. Not all metal oxides will dissolve in water. An acid has an excess of H plus ions. An alkali has an excess of OH minus ions. If something is neutral, that indicates that it has the same number of H plus and OH minus ions present. One method of looking at whether things are acids or alkalis <coughs> is to use a pH scale. This indicates both as a number and as a colour where, whether things are acidic, neutral or pH. An acid being 1, something neutral being 7, an alkali being up to 14, red, green, blue. If an acid is diluted, it indicates its pH is going to rise to 7. If an alkali is being diluted, it indicates its pH will be falling towards 7. Often, in acid reactions, hydrogen gas is given off, the test for which is that it burns with a pop. Acid rain is caused when pollutants in fuels, such as sulphur in coal, burns to give sulphur dioxide, which will dissolve in rainwater, causing the acid rain. We now start moving to qualitative, sorry, quantitative methods of looking at material. I always start thinking about something called a mole. And a mole is the formula mass of a substance in grams. This will be talked about later. And we will need to look at how to work out concentration using this. Acid reactions. There are four acid reactions, three of which are neutralization. First one, acid and a metal. This will always give you the metal salt with hydrogen gas. This is not a neutralization reaction. Acid plus metal oxide, acid plus metal hydroxide, and acid plus metal carbonate are all neutralization reactions because water is formed. With a metal carbonate, carbon dioxide gas is also formed. All four of these reactions will form a salt. The name of the salt is indicated from the metal, from the metal oxide, hydroxide, etc., plus the salt name from the acid. Hydrochloric acid will give a chloride, nitric acid will give a nitrate, sulfuric acid will give a sulfate. Two types of salt can be formed. They can be soluble salts, where the salt that is formed is dissolved in the water that is also formed, this is extracted by, first of all, neutralization, then filter off any excess reactants and then evaporate the water to leave the salt. Or an insoluble salt will be formed. This is collected by precipitation, whereby the salt itself comes out into the water and it is filtered. Titrations are methods of discovering the concentration or volume used of one of the reactants because in a neutralization reactant the mole ratio between each acid, between the acid and the alkali have to be the same. In an acid reaction 
some of the reactants are present on both sides of the, the equation. These are indicated as being spectator ions. They do not take part in it. So in the one given here, we can see that the nitrate and the copper are present on both sides of the reactant, of the equation. This indicates that they are not taking part in the reaction at all. They are spectator ions. Calculations. The backbone of any calculation is the gram form of a mass. This is simply the mass of all the elements, atoms present in the compound. The one given, ammonium sulphate, you see there are four oxygens, each oxygen weighs 16, that gives us 64. There's one sulphur, which weighs 32. And there are two nitrogens and eight hydrogens in the ammonium. So that's given there giving a total mass of 132 grams. This equals one mole. Moles. To use the formula as given, the idea would be to put your thumb over the required uh, figure i.e. the number of moles is given by the mass divided by its gram formula mass. In the case indicated, the mass given is, is 1.32 grams. The gram formula mass as worked out earlier is 132 grams. That will give us 1.32 divided by 132 informing us that we have 0 0.1 moles present. Concentration. Looking at the same, the same uh, material, we have a similar formula. Again, to find the number of moles, we put your thumb over the n. That will give us a concentration times volume. Find the concentration. Put your thumb over the c. Give us the number of moles divided by the volume. The volume must be expressed in liters. If the concentration of 13.2 grams dissolved in 250 centimetres cubed, we have first work out the number of moles we have. So that would be 13.2 divided by 132, giving us a number of moles of 0.1. Concentration equals number of moles divided by the volume. That would be 0.1 divided by 0.25 change from 250 centimeters to liters so it gives us a concentration of 0.4 moles per liter calculations from balanced equations the best way of laying these out is as below we need to find out the amount of carbon dioxide being made from 5 grams of carbon of calcium carbonate. The balance equation will be given. These are work these work on the ratios between the moles of each of the material that we are interested in. First off, put in the mole ratios. Indicate which ones we are interested in. In this case the calcium carbonate and the carbon dioxide. Work out the gram formula mass for each of the ones we're interested in. For calcium carbonate, that works out as 100. For carbon dioxide, that works out as 44. Put in the actual mass that we have. For the calcium carbonate, we know we have 5 grams. We are trying to find out the mass of carbon dioxide. Work out the ratio 
which must be the same for each of them, between the, the, the end material that we know, that we have the information on. The ratio of calcium carbonate, gram per mass to actual mass, would be 100 divided by 5, which is 20. If we then divide the, the gram per mass for the carbon dioxide by the ratio from the calcium carbonate, i.e. 44 divided by 20, we are given the answer, 22.2 grams. If we are asked for it in volume, with carbon dioxide being a gas, we would know the volume of carbon dioxide will be given as being 24 litres. We know how many grams we have of carbon dioxide, 2.2. To use the formula from earlier, the number of moles would be the mass, 2.2, divided by the gram formula as 44 which will give us a 0 0.05 moles we know the volume of one mole is 24 litres so if we divide that we multiply that by the actual volume that we have we are given 1.2 litres. In a titration, we are looking at acid concentration times by acid volume times by the power of the acid, i.e. the number of H plus ions present, will equal the base concentration times by the base volume times by the base power, i.e. the number of OHs that are present.